सर्वो उपनिषदो गाबो दुग्ध गोपाल नंदना पार्थो पापा सुधीर भक्त दुग्धम गीता मृत महात मेडिटेशन ऑन द गीता the upanishads are as a herd of cows krishna the son of a coward is the milker arjuna is the calf the supreme ambrosia of the gita the milk and the wise man the drinker This morning our subject is thoughts on the Gita, part eighty-four. Today we shall start the tenth chapter of the Gita. Gita is the quintessence of Vedanta. Sarva Upanishadhe di, it is the essence of all the Upanishads. Seldom we find any Hindu home where there is no Gita. She is a very, very popular scriptures, and also a non-sectarian scripture. The Vaishnavas, Shaktas, Shaivas, Kanapattas, all religious sects of India, study Gita, respect the Bhagavad Gita. Gita is just like the Bible of the Christians. Quran of the Muslims and the three pijakas of the Buddhists. Sometimes these great teachers of the world come to solve human problems. Arjuna had two problems in his life when he came to the battlefield of the Kurukshetra: fear, confusion. All human beings have these problems. Fear, fear of many things: death, losing money, losing property, losing beauty, and confusion. Sometimes we do not know how to decide what is right, what is wrong. Whether I am doing right or wrong, we sometimes cannot ascertain. So, I mean, Bibi Karanda gave a very beautiful example. The thing which you make you strong, that is right. The thing which you make you weak, that is wrong. You will not have to open the dictionary. The thing which you make you strong, that is right. We need to do something. Our mind, our conscience, tell us you did right. From inside, we hear a voice. And when we do wrong, our conscience tells us you did wrong, but we don't listen. We don't listen to our conscience. So we find in the battlefield, Kurjuna was confused. Krishna was his charioteer. And friend, philosopher, and guide came forward to remove his two great problems. Krishna was a chariot here. In one hand, he is holding the reins of the four horses. In another hand, he has a whip. To beat the, to drive the horses, control your minds, reins. So we, there is an analogy about this chariot. This human body is a chariot. Your senses are the horses. Your mind is a rein. Your buddhi, intellect is the charioteer. And your soul, the Atman, is the passenger. If the horses are disciplined, 
they will take you to the right destination. And if not, they can make you an accident. So we need a good charioteer. So we find Krishna was a very good charioteer driving the original chariot. His body, his mind, his senses. He is the driver. Basha in the meditation mentioned that beautiful word, Tutra Betri Kapanayi. Tutra Betri. Bet means whip, cane. If you go wrong direction, I shall whip you. It must go to the right direction. In the final, we find Arjuna Sanjaya sage, Jatra Jogeshwara Krishna, Jatra Partha Dhanudhara, Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhutir, Dhruva Nitir Motir Mama. What that is Krishna? Yatu Dharma, Stato Ujaya. Where there is Dharma, there is victory. Where there is Krishna, there surely will be fortune, victory, prosperity, right conduct. Those things are very, very vital in our life. Gita has 18 chapters. The first chapter is grief, sorrow, despondency. And the last chapter is liberation, freedom. These are the 18 states. Krishna holding the hand of Arjuna took to the highest plane. It is really a beautiful scripture. We finish the ninth chapter. Raja Vidya Raja Buddha Yoga. The sovereign knowledge and the sovereign secret. The kingly knowledge, the kingly secret. The final verse of that chapter Manmana Bhavo, Mad Bhavso, Mad Jaji, Maam Namaskaru. Mame Vaishyaji Yukteiva. Atmana Matparayana, which is a beautifully arranged. First, we shall come from the back. Mam Namaskuru, just bow down or salute me like this. Krishna is telling Arjuna, first salute me. Learn how to bend your head. If you do that, then do you know what will happen? Next step, Mod Jaji. Then you will worship me. When you have a little love for me, you have a little humility, you will worship me. Then, if you worship me, then you will be Mod Bhakta. Then you will be my Jabuti. Next step, if you be my Jabuti, you will be Mon Mana. You will think of me. Thus, Matparayana, thus, if you connect yourself with me, Mameva Vushyashi, Mameva Eshyashi, definitely you will reach me. Your mind will be connected with me and definitely you will reach me. Very simple solution. No ambiguity, very clear message we find. The last verse of the ninth chapter, sorry, yes, ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Now the 10th chapter will begin. That is the introduction. That secret, that sovereign knowledge will connect you to God. And now after having that knowledge, what would you see? You see this whole universe in front of me in front of you. Now Krishna is going to tell us, I am that universe. 
name of this chapter is called Vibhuti Yoga. The yoga of a splendor, Vibhuti. The universe, you see, it is my Vibhuti. It is my glory. It is my manifestation. I created it out of my own. Then what will happen in your inside and outside, in both places, you will see that you are connected with me. When we shall read the first verse, Krishna mentioned, this is a very beautiful verse, Shri Bhagavanu Bacham Bhuyo Yeva Mahabaho Shrinume Paramam Bacham Yatteham Priyamanaya Bhakshami Tehitakam Maya Again, O mighty arm, do you listen, my supreme word, which I, wishing your welfare, will tell you, who are delighted to hear me. Most of the chapter we find Arjuna is asking questions and Krishna is answering. This chapter begins, Krishna himself started the chapter without depending on Arjuna's question. No question is necessary. Listen, it is very interesting. A Mahabhav, oh great warrior, great hero of the whole hero of the Mahabharata is Arjuna. Very truthful, extremely religious, honest, invincible. Ye Mahabhavo, addressing this Krishna is indicating that you can do it. You have this, you see, sometimes some guru enhances the strength, power of the disciple. You can do it. Do it. It is extremely important. Some guru, you know, they, ah, you are no good. That is not the way. He Mahabahu. Bhuyo I mean, look, I told you about my glory in the last three chapters. Seventh chapter, I mentioned my Bibhuti. Eighth chapter, I mentioned my Bibhuti. Ninth chapter, I mentioned my Bibhuti, my power. And 10th chapter, I am elaborating the same thing. So he's saying, I am telling you again, Paramam Vacha, my supreme words. What is the supreme words? Who can speak about God? Only God himself. He will tell Muni, Rishi, all these people, those who wrote books, they are originated from me. They do not know about me. <laughs> My infinite nature. You see, in Vedanta scripture, there are two ways to know God. First, Sarupa Lakshana. Second, Tatastha Lakshana. What is Sarupa Lakshana? In the Upanishad we read, Sattam, Gyanam, Anantam, Brahma. Brahman is Sattam, Truth. Anantam, Infinite. Sattam, Gyanam, Knowledge. Truth, Knowledge, Infinite. This is the sign of Brahman. That is called Sarupa Lakshana. A Tatastha Lakshana, Yato bhai vani bhutani jayanti jina jatani jivanti jat prayanta visam vishanti tad vijigasa swa tad brahmeti. That is called Tatastha Lakshana. It is in Taitiri Upanishad. From where this whole creation evolved, where it stays, sustained, and where it merges, that is Brahman. That is indicating something. 
That is called Tachas Lakshana, Sai, indicating Sai. And Sarupa Lakshana, direct. So he is telling his Sarupa Lakshana. Well, do you know why I am telling all these things to you? I don't have any selfish motive. I love you. Another thing you will watch in your life, the person you love, you want to give your everything to that person. It is very natural. The person you really love, you want to give your everything to that person. So I really love you. That is the reason. Hito Kamaya, I am a royal wisher. And that is the reason I want to tell you again, elaborately, Bakshami, Moreover, you are a truth, man of truth, full of devotion, and so have patience. Listen, my great mystery. Nobody can know me fully if I do not reveal myself to that person. My bhibhuti and my yoga. Bibhuti means manifestation, the splendor. You see beautiful ocean, mountain, space, infinite space, trees, plants, men, women, beautiful people, children. You see beauty everywhere. So he is telling <coughs> that beauty, this beautiful universe came from me. This is my body. This whole universe is the body of God. And yoga, what is yoga? My power to manifest it, that is yoga. I am the creature, but you will need to see inside me the power. Agatana, ghatana, puti, ushi, maya. My maya power, which can make impossible possible. That is why that you must watch that I am going to reveal to you. In the very beginning, Krishna is making an introduction. That what I, what I am going to tell. You see, those who are good doctors, they first listen, they diagnose. Then he says, this is your problem, this is the disease, I am going to treat you this way. And it will work. This conviction comes from a good doctor. So Krishna knows very well what is on Juna's mind. So he is telling, Hitokam Maya, for your welfare, I am going to tell you. Yoga. Paramam Bacha. Next verse. Name bidu suragana prabhavam na maharshaya aham adhiri devanam maharshinam chasarvasha. Neither the host of devas nor the great rishis know my origin. For in every way I am the source of all, all the devas and the great rishis. I'm the source. How will you know? Through our ego, eye consciousness. That is the way I will know everything. <clears throat> Sri Ramakrishna made a beautiful analogy. There are three dolls went to measure the depth of the ocean. The first doll was made of stone. It took bath and came out as it is, no change. A cloth doll, the moment touched the ocean water, soaked in water, but dragged itself on the, on the ocean, on the seaside, and just collapsed on the sand. 
that is the sign of a devotee. And the salt doll, when to measure the depth of the ocean, the moment it touched the ocean, melted. That is the sign of a jnani. They merges into God. Once another time, Sri Ramakrishna made a joke to his two disciples who declared him an avatar, Ram Dattu and Girish Chandra Ghosh. Ram was a doctor. So Sri Ramakrishna made a comment, very interesting comment. <laughs> Ram Morakata doctor and Girish theatre manager and declared me as an avatar. What do they know about avatar? <laughs> The Ram is a doctor, he is a surgeon cutting human body, and so he knows about it, about it that. And Girish manages theatre, he acts, writes the play. They declared me as an author. What do they know about God? Very funny statement. <laughs> Another day he asked Keshav Chandrachan, what do you think of me? Sir, you are a divine being. I do not accept your word. You are still slave to your lust and gold. If Narada than Shukdeva would tell me, who am I? My true nature, I would accept. You see, only a spiritual person can evaluate a spiritual person. <clears throat> Ordinary people can't. Our scripture says, God is abang manusha gochadam. God is beyond speech, beyond mind. Then is there any way to know God? God opens and says, yes. Drishyate tu agraya buddhya shukshmaya shukshma dorshivi. Drishyate. It can be seen. It can be realized. It can be experienced. The Atman. By whom? Agraya Buddhya, the person who has a very one-pointed intellect. Shukshmaya Shukshma Dorshibi, they see the subtle things which ordinary people cannot. <coughs> Agraya Buddhya. Sri Ramakrishna gave a beautiful analogy. Here is the eye of a needle, here is the thread. You want to pass the thread through the eye of a needle. But the thread has many fibers. It will not enter. So what do you do? You take a little water, a moisture, you rub the, the thread and make it one-pointed, then fish, it goes. What does it mean? Those fibers are desires. As long as have many, you have many desires, it will not go there. You know, when Sri Ramakrishna's analogies are so vivid to us, why are we not realizing God? Why are we not realizing God? That is the reason. Many desires. It is not one point. These Rishayas, Munis, I created them. What do they know about me? Yumam ajam anadim cha vetti loka mahishwaram asang mura sa marteshu sarva papai pramuchyate. One who knows me, the birthless and beginningless, one, the great lord of the universe, such a one among mortals is undeluded and is preached from all sins. Very beautiful verse. 
యుమం అజం అనాదిం చీ లోక మహీశ్వరం ప్రముచ్యతి చదువు పాపోయి ఫ్రమ్ ఆల్ సీన్స్ ఈ గెట్స్ ది వరీషన్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ సాఫర్ వాయ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ బ్యాడ్ కార్మ సింపుల్ యాక్ట్స్ వాయ్ దేర్ ఇస్ సింపుల్ యాక్ట్స్ దేర్ ఇస్ ఇగ్నోరెన్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ జిల్యూషన్ దట్ కమ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ఇగ్నోరెన్స్ and when that ignorance goes away we see the full sun full moon and how to get rid of it no me that krishna says i remember there is a beautiful story of swami turyananda the great disciple of sri ramakrishna he experimented gita in his life gitukta yogi he was passing through a very bad time depression in varanagar mart at midnight he was pacing on the roof he found all over darkness all of a sudden the wind began to blow and the cloud was blown away and he found it was a full moon night bright moon was visible this became a revelation to him he said my goodness this is my momentary depression this this thing gloomy mind is not real it can be blown away as i saw deep cloud covered the moon and the whole place became became make it dark so my darkness also can be blown away and he got back his strength again you know sometimes when you read the scriptures sometimes you see the experiment and experience of these great rishis and the great monks how they are inspired sometimes some people depressed how oh, i am depressed i have no hope that happened to arjuna depressed i remember we had a swami in portland swami asheshanand so his disciple went to him and said say swami i am depressed depressed get used to it <laughs> funny i am unborn there is no birth and supreme divine other things have birth change and death this one is immortal changeless birthless all human bodies pass through six stages jayate which is born osti which exists bardhate it grows vipari namate it modifies apakshyate it decays marishati it dies whatever you see in this world this all these human bodies will go through these six succeeding stages this is inevitable nobody can stop it to this miss universe also one day will die but beyond this creation is god it is his play the world is his playground we are all actors and actresses we are playing different roles just like in the tapis you know that the dolls they dance and the somebody is jam make them dance so we are all dancing in this stage that is maya he is playing this whole thing is a play If you play well, you are happy. If you do not play well, you are unhappy. That's all. All nothing but play. 
but don't take this play seriously, then you will suffer. <laughs> Suppose you were a very poor man acting in the role of a king, because, and after the play is over, you think, still if you think you are king, you are a king, you will be, <laughs> you will be miserable. <laughs> If you tell that I shall not remove my royal dress, I shall keep this thing forever, it will not work. <laughs> By the power of that imperishable reality, the sun and the moon go in their perspective courses. All the streams flow in the direction towards the ocean, which is in the Vijayadharana Upanishad. Gargi, by whose command these things are moving. You know, if you watch carefully, you will find inside there is a power which is working through us. That power is God. Consciousness. Without that, you are dropped dead right now. That we do not see. Krishna is trying to see, that is yogam. Vibhuti, yogam means you go inside and see that power. The person who knows my nature, ojam, I am birthless. Onadi, beginningless. The creature, preserved by destroyer of this universe. The person who knows me like this, Sarva Papai Pramuchate, he becomes free from sin. He gets liberation. Asham Muru. Muru means fool. Asham Muru means he is the most intelligent person who knows me fully. Then Krishna mentioned, let me tell you, the all qualities you see inside you all came from me. Buddhir jnanam asang moha, kshama saitam dama kshama, sukham dukham bhavo abhavo, bhayam cha bhayam eva cha, ahimsa samata tushtihi, tapo dhanam yasho vajasah, bhavanti bhava bhutanam, matte eva prithagvita. Intellect, knowledge, non delusion, Forbearance, truth, restraint of the external senses, calmness of heart, happiness, misery, birth, death, fear, as well as fearlessness, non-injury, equality, contentment, austerity, benevolence, good name, as well as ill fame. These different kinds of qualities of beginnings of beings arise for me alone. When I read this verse, do you know what you think? All our good and bad qualities is coming from the same source, energy. You see, the, you see he is talking about your bad thoughts, good thoughts, everything come from me. Here is the game. Problem, good and evil. Some religions think God is only good. All bad things come from Satan, devil. Christianity and other other religions, they, 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 they separate it. In Vedanta, good and evil are the same energy moving through opposite direction. When it is high tide, we call it good. When it is low tide, we call it bad. But same water current. The fire which cooks food for your hungry stomach, the same fire can burn your house and your child. Fire is the same. That is the way Vedanta, Vedanta interprets good and evil. Energy. You are miserable because you made mistakes, which is all your karma. It is doctrine of karma explains this Happiness and misery. If you do good, you will be happy. If you do bad, you will be unhappy. <laughs> Therefore, that is sure and certain. This is called doctrine of karma. 
Uji also all this karma, jiva. Inji uji also, you, me. No one, no one else. Man is the architect of his own fate. You don't blame anybody. Your karma. Your wrong decision, your right decision. Decision is yours. You know, this aspect of Vedanta is very, very beautiful. I am that Atman. Infinite power is within me. I can change. I can change my life. That is the way spiritual life begins. Change. I remember once I was listening to a television station. It is a, a minister came and gave a lecture. Change. Change yourself. Then he gave an illustration. You have seen Hollywood movies. The script writer bring the script. The director reads the, read the script, selects the actors and actresses, songs, dance, everything. Then shooting begins. When the shooting begins, <coughs> 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 the director <coughs> says that this one is not working. Cut. He tells the <coughs> scriptwriter it will not work. Change. The scriptwriter had to change. Each time the cut means, do you know what cut means? 25 to 30 million dollars loss. Setting the stage and time and the cameraman, all these things. So much money, wished. Then it goes on for a few times, it will be cut, then the final movie comes, just perfect, right? <clears throat> but behind that perfection, there are so many changes they make that we need in our life. We must change. <clears throat> Sarva papui pramuchati. Vedanta does not have good things coming from the God and bad things coming from the uh, devil. Everything has come from one infinite source. So, what are the items that have come from the source? I have mentioned all those items intellect, knowledge, non delusion, all those things. <clears throat> These different kinds of qualities of all beings arise from me only. That is the bold statement of Vedanta. Not only the good, but also what you call the evil, also come from the same source. Very often, people shout, how can evil come from God? As if evil and good are two absolute things, they are relative things only. What is good to one, may be evil to another. What is good to you now, may be evil to you a little later. So Vedanta never made an absolute distinction between good and evil. They are relative values. Very interesting. This morning I was reading, hello, I think it was Washington Post or New York Times somewhere, an article about Iraq, that ISIS grew by the support of the Sunni Muslims. And what happened? Now they are the victims. They supported them. Now in Mosul and other places, <clears throat> these people, you know, they are trying to destroy them. And oof, it is hard to see that how mother is holding the children and running. They're all Sunnis. They supported them, and now it became a boomerang to them. You know how they think they will help me. Now they will be with the other party. There, there is no other way. I remember there is one Swami, he was telling that, you know sometimes how good things can be bad? I found a dog, has a, had a wound. 
I took a little carbolic acid and cleaned that wound, and I thought that will heal that dog. Do you know what happened? The dog started to lick the wound, and that carbolic acid killed the dog. I was thinking that I am helping this dog, but now I see I am the cause of the death of this dog. How good and bad works in this world. Sometimes we try to do good, it may not be, it may be, we may get the reverse. <laughs> I remember we had a friend, he had a sugar plantation on the coast of Gujarat. And he said, Swami, some people hate snakes, cobra, but I had to love cobras. These cobras they eat all the insects in my sugar plantation. They help me so that I can get good cane. Just see how good and evil work. You, if you have cobra in your house, they will kill but because that will bite, bite you and can destroy your life. But they are, they are trying to raise cobras so that his sugar field will be protected from the insects and the bugs. It is amazing how things work in this world, good and evil. So all our qualities inside, knowledge, everything come from God. <clears throat> Next verse, six. The Marshayu Sapta Pudbe Chattaro Manavastata Mat Mat Bhava Manasa Jata Yesham Loka Ima Praja. The seven great rishis, the previous four, as well as the Manus, who had their thoughts fixed on me, were born of my mind, and from whom are these creatures in the world. Very interesting. Creation. Vedantic method of creation is very scientific. From that cosmic consciousness, the first evolution is the space. Tasmad by Tasmad Atman Akasha Sambhuta Akashat Bayu Bayu Ragni Agnirapa Adva Pritivi Pritibha Moshadaya Ushadibhannam Annat Purusha. That is the chronology, succession of the creation. Atmana, Akasha, Sambhudav, Atmana. From the cosmic consciousness, first evolution is the space. From space comes air. From air comes fire. From fire comes water. From water comes earth. From earth, from trees, plants, vegetables, food. From that comes Purusha. Beings, human beings. These human beings are nothing but food. Food. Our bodies are made of, out of food. When we are in the womb of the mother, through the umbilical cord, we are sucking food through the mother's body. That is the way the baby grows. Baby does not eat at that time. Through the umbilical cord, the inner the full fluid goes into the baby system and the baby is developed. Food. Annamaya Purusha, Upanishad says. <clears throat> Very interesting. So he is telling, listen, my, about my creation. Maharshaya, the great rishis, there are seven rishis, Dhrigu, Marichi, Otri, Pulastya, Pulaha, Krutu, Vashishya, Ittadi. Then four great sages, Sanat Kumar, Sanatana, Sananda, Sanaka. Then fourteen Manus, Shayambhava, Shayambhava, Uttama, Shabarni, Vaivasata, Daksha, anyhow, all these Pauranic names I you don't need to know. They, I am the creator of them so that they can through the progeny, you know, 
then human beings came come human beings came very very interesting <laughs> all comes from the consciousness next verse 7 etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tattatha swabhi kampina yogena jujyati natra samjha this verse is very important one who in reality knows this manifold manifestations of my being and this yoga power of mind becomes established in the unshakable yoga there is no doubt about it vibhutim Vibhuti means manifestation. This whole universe is the manifestation of God. You see, in Bible, we see who comes that is Srishti. God orders, creation comes. Let there be sun. There is sun. Let there be moon. There is moon. If you read the in the beginning Genesis chapter of the Bible, let there be water. Let there be earth. Let there be light. all these things whatever comes from the lips of gods again that thing manifests that is a christian jewish that is their concept of the creation genesis here also will somebody ask me we were going to if i say something does it happen believe me if you are a man of truth it will happen God is shatya shankar. He is the truth. His every breath is truth. His life is he, he, he is established in truth. He is the embodiment of truth. So whatever comes from his lips, that thing will happen. Such a person who knows this truth, or he or she, develops akim ak avikam avikam pa yoga. Yoga, which cannot be shaken, kampa means shaking, obi kampa means unshakable, absolutely steady. That is what we see: a steady mind, a steady buddhi intellect, a steady life, and not shaking. These words are very, very interesting. Obi kampa na yogi na. If you are a surgeon, and if you are, if you have a, if you have Parkinson, you cannot do surgery anymore because your hand shakes. Same thing. If you are a very shaky person, unsteady, unpredictable, it is hard to live with that person. I tell you frankly. If you change your mind every moment, I cannot trust you. You know, please listen carefully. That if these words are how beautiful it is, or become pain as you gain, this yoga should not shake, should not move. You should not be indecisive in your life. Your wife, your children, or your husband, all will be confused. Hurry. I was confused. I'm a very old Swami. He told me something. Next day, say say something different. Clarity. If I follow his words and if I do something, that means I'm making mistakes. In our day to day life, how Gita helps these through these words. Be steady, not unshaky, not indecisive. You will find those parents are very good, dependable. The children also learn from their parents from the very beginning. They become very steady. Other is broken home. Children go in a very bad turmoil, goes through turmoil. It's fear. One, we have a devotee in California. 
Her daughter was a Catholic nun. She told me that some of my students, Catherine, she was a school teacher, music teacher, but some of my students do not go back to home after the school. Oh, in the home, my parents fight, quarrel. The more we stay in the house, the school, then we have some peace. Fight, quarrel for little things. How important it is, Gita, to follow, you know? Just be steady, be strong. One person in the whole family can ruin the peace of the family. My vibhuti and yoga, this manifestation of mind as the universe and the power that made for that manifestation. Vibhuti means power of manifestation. Yoga means the power that made for that manifestation. <coughs> Yo vetti, those who understand this truth, tattata, truly, saw such a person or be campaign of yogina by this unshakable yoga, jijjati, natra samshaya, there is no doubt at all that he or she achieves that yoga, this of a steady mind. A steady mind is reflected in one aspect of the human physical individuality, namely the eye. When the eye is a steady, you can take for granted that the mind is also steady. If the eye is unsteady, mind is also unsteady. The eye is the index of the mind. The face itself is the index of the soul, according to Shakespeare and we all accept it. And the eye is a great index of the stage of the mind. Calm and steady eyes mean calm and steady mind. Once Mahatma Gandhi came to Banaras to visit our hospital. And one Swami was his guide. He was giving a guide tour to Mahatma Gandhi. The Swami made a remark that whenever I showed anything, he saw only that thing. His eyes are not moving this way, that way. Because his eyes are so focused. But it is a great thing to learn from Mahatma Gandhi. He yesterday I was watching from the computer, I was watching something, some great things of the history. In 1939, Gandhi wrote a letter to Hitler. Before you begin war, think about it. Humanity. There will be great destruction. A beautiful one page later, he wrote from Warta, from Gurda, in English. I, I saw it in the, in the, on, the, on the computer. Gandhi's letter to Hitler in 1999, before the Second World War started. Eyes. Sometimes Sri Ramakrishna also mentions various kinds of eyes. Brisho chakshu, bull eyes, cat eyes, divine eyes, lotus eyes. Bull eyes, they are very lustful people. Devo chakshu is elongated, very long, it goes through the ear. Very long eyes. Yogi chakshu, round, a little reddish color. If you reach Sri Ramakrishna Sri Ram, and his divine play, there he mentioned how many kinds of eyes and how they indicate that person's character. And some people you see very quick movement of their eyes, sometimes they see through their angles, they're very shrewd. You know, it's like this way they're watching. Or sometimes you will see moving too fast. Those people are extremely restless. You see, I, mind and eyes, they are how they are connected, he is telling. So Krishna is telling, or become pain as yogena. Motionless. Focused. Be focused. 
point is Sri Ramakrishna told Swamiji, you know, you have a large eyes. Swamiji's eyes was protruding eyes. When he would sleep, his eyelids could not close the eyes. And the eyes are so bulging, so protruding. So he see, seeing your eyes, I, people may think, you are not a dry person. You are a great devotee. Your inside is full of love. Seeing your eyes, I can tell you. Sri Ramakrishna told Swami Vivekananda. Aham sarvaisya prabhavu matta sarvam prabhartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhavo samannitaha. I am the origin of all. From me everything evolves. Thus thinking, the wise worship me with loving consciousness. I am the origin of everything in this universe, moving, unmoving. Whatever you see in a tree, leaves, twigs, branches, then flowers and fruits, all of them originate from the seed. So this is the origin of everything, myself, the infinite, divine. From me emanate all things, manifests or emanates. Knowing this, wise people worship me with the knowledge. What kind of wise people? Bhava Samunita, people with loving consciousness. Bhava means emotion, love, bhakti. This is the nature of bhakti. You can also have a non-bhakti consciousness and also worship. But in this path of bhakti, devotion, this kind of loving consciousness is essential. Very interesting. Bob. Do you know what bhav is? Feeling. Bhava. Mood. Feeling. That is bhava. In Sanskrit. Sometimes we work without any bhava. Mechanical. Sometimes you go to work. You do not like your work. But you have to do it for money. Your heart is not with your work. I remember when we joined the monastery. <clears throat> a monk told us, do you drive your car? You do. But the car was manufactured in the factory. When it come out from the assembly line, what do they do? They fill up the tank with gas. Then they put grease, some lubricating oil, all the pistons of your engine. That the pistons moves up and down. All should be lubricated. Without lubrication, your gas tank is full. You drive the car, there will be fire. There will be metallic friction in the engine and it will catch fire. You need lubrication, mobile, mobile. That will move smoothly. That is called bhava. Lubricates, lubricates so that the thing moves very smoothly. All machines, aeroplane, wherever you go, they put sufficient lubrication. Otherwise, metallic friction will cause fire. It will destroy. That is, that Swami told us, that is called bhava. You can work, but if you do not have bhava, it will be a drudgery. You will neither, it will not take you anywhere. Baba, feeling. You are a doctor, you must have feel for the patient. Otherwise, oh, I need money, whether it works or not, I don't care. It will not, that is not a real duty of a doctor. Feeling. That is the most important thing in a spiritual life. A family life, any life you say. That Baba, that Krishna is telling. This feeling must be there behind your action. 
That's how much he taught us. Otherwise, we are not social worker. I'm giving lecture here. If I do not have feeling, laugh for you, why I shall have to tell you which is good for you. I meditated on it, I studied it, and prepared these talks, and I know what I'm doing. I put my 100% love feeling behind this talk. That is the way it should be. That is my puja, that is my worship. That Krishna is telling, you know, Aung Sarvaj, Sarvam Prabhupada, Iti Matva Bhajante Mam, the people, those who worship me, Buddha Bhava Samanita, holding a feeling. Today I'll have to give a lecture on ritual in the Hindu temple at six o'clock. I was thinking, what is puja, that Bhava? Puja, Bhajante, Bhajana, Puja. Do you know what puja is? Everything belongs to God. You are giving God's thing to God, it does not make any sense. It does not bring any glory. So one Swami told you a story. You are a rich man, you have an orchard. You have two um, gardeners there. One gardener found a ripe papaya on the tree and he picked it up before it was pecked by any birds. And thinking that when my master will come in during weekend, I shall give it to the master. When master came and said, I kept this papaya for you, please take it. The master knows this garden is mine, this papaya tree is mine, this papaya is mine, this man is my paid worker. He gave my papaya to me. <laughs> he gave my papaya to me. But do you know what? This gardener could think, ah, he doesn't give me sufficient money, let it be destroyed by the tree, I do not care. No, he's feeling for the master. He picked it up before it is destroyed and kept it inside and handed over to you. That feeling, that thoughtfulness, that is puja. That is bhava. You know, sometimes take one word and meditate on it and see what really bhava is. Feeling, do you feel? You feel for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your neighbors. That without that feeling, life is full of selfishness, egotistic, self-centered mind. They will be, never be happy. All problems you will see, some people, those who only me, 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 day and night thinking about me, love me. I shall not love you, but you love me. I am begging love from everybody without giving love. But that way it does not work. Whatever you will give, that thing will come back to you. If you have a smiling face on the mirror, smiling reflection. Gloomy face, gloomy reflection. That is the way the world functions. If you really want to be happy, you make others happy. That Krishna is talking here. Buddha Bhava Shamanita. Have some bhava, feeling. Bhavena Lavate Sarvam, Bhavena Devu Darshanam. Through bhava, you will achieve everything. You will see God. Our scripture says. <coughs> now I stop here. Next, <coughs> next three verses are very important to me. I sometimes tell people, go remember. 10, 9, 10, 11. Go home and read those three verses. 10, chapter 10, 9, 10, 11. If you read those three verses, then you exactly know what you are supposed to do and what God is going to do to you. Asato ma sad gamayo, tamaso ma jyotir gamayo, mrittur ma amritam gamayo, abir abir ma yedhi, rudra jate dakshinam mukam, tenamam pahi nityam, om shanti shanti shanti. Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, 
lead us from death to immortality, light us through and through, and guide us evermore with thy loving presence. Om, peace, peace, peace be forth.